Hello everyone, this is Mike and Zoe and today we are doing, what is it, episode 14? Mm -hmm. Episode 14. Now, we need to tell our audience a bit of a story, don't we? What? Oh, you don't know? Well, what I'll story? I'll tell them then, I will. Okay. okay, so yesterday, no, when was it? Last time, for after episode 13, we invited mommy and little sister Lilith to play and we played and we found out two things. Number one, if somebody is very fast and just keeps on doing laps, that person doesn't make enough score to win even though they're first, which isn't ideal in a racing game. Yeah. So we need to change that. And the way we're going to do that is by making it so that we're going to keep track of who's first, who's second, who's third, and who's fourth. And uh, whoever's first and gets around first uh, will will get a uh, bonus while crossing the line. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one thing. Then the second thing that we found is that basically the game was very, very, very boring after a while because all it entailed was one of us to th roll the dice and that's it. So to fix that, what we are going to do is we're going to introduce some kind of usable cards. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a pretty major change, right? We're going to have all of our players keep, say, an inventory of, say, two cards, and at the end of each of their turns, before they let go of the turn, they can use uh, their cards or mm -hmm. something, which will also allow us to add more tiles, maybe. We could add tiles that give you double the cards. We could add tiles that remove all of your cards. We could do all sorts of cool things, right? Mm -hmm. Well, for now, we're going to start with tracking. Well, and what if we make some... What if the cards are invisible? What do you mean by invisible? Like they're flipped over and we don't know what they are. Well, obviously, but you need to draw them, right? And every time you finish a turn, you're going to draw a card. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to let you use it. So there's quite a lot we need to do, right? So let's and begin... We can make some bad ones. Yes, that would be fun too. Let's begin with... Um... So you go like, I'm going to use this and I'm going to win, and then you die instead. Yeah, but the card should do all sorts of crazy stuff, like, mm -hmm. for example, swap places with someone, <laughs> that sort of stuff. Uh, right, anyway, let's let's focus. So we're going to begin with uh, the tracking the position of players. So let's go to our code. Click. All right, so we're going to go to the player right away and take a look. And we need to take a look at the, uh, the code. And what we're going to do is we're going to add an int for the position. Okay. Okay. So uh, go ahead and add the public. Public int, yeah, and we're gonna call this one uh, uh, race position, I guess. We don't want to be confused between that and some kind of transform position or something. Position semicolon, all right, perfect. Now, this needs to be set up. Uh, no, this, this will be updated every time a turn ends or every time any move happens, I suppose. Okay. Hmm. You know what? I think we should also change our, our player's prefab to have a little number on top of them. Okay. That tells us whether you're first, second, or third, that sort of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go to our prefabs. Um, player, drag them in. Boop. There's the player. If Model, I'm... wheels, and everything. Let's create a uh, 3D object text max pro text. Okay, wait, this is going to be very annoying because it's a starting text. So let's steal a text from somewhere else. Uh, so we are going to go to the board. UI, duplicate this score. And let's drag him into the player. Now close the board. Now that the player is here, the, the thing is here, just write position or text underscore position, even better. Yeah, text. Text. Text, Text underscore, underscore position. position. Hit enter. Yes. Okay. So we got text position. Now we're going to uh, put it at zero, zero, zero. Now it should be overlapping with our car. Okay. So you can clearly see that it's occupying too much room. So we're going to make it way smaller, right? So let's try with a width of one and a height of 0 
there it is that's pretty small that's a little bit more reasonable now let's see if we can drag it up a little bit now it only says 100 and it has the wrong comma yeah, it's a bit odd all right because the zero is going down the line so what we're going to do here is we are going to disable wrapping we are not going to allow over yeah i guess we're going to allow overflow and we are going to put it in the center in the middle that's fine and we're gonna say minimum three even less minimum one for example who cares right and maximum we're gonna make three there something okay. like that right and let's see maybe we can move it up yet a little bit like this so it always appears at the top of the car mm -hmm. uh, so there... we don't need to make it that long we just need to write one two three or four mm -hmm. there is a bit of a concern though which is when the car rotates the text rotates with it that's right so that's not good undo this for me please what we are going to do is we're going to say we're going to create a text container so create empty and call this one text container without the underscore. Yeah. Oh, whoops, it's not a variable like in code. Text, text container with a capital C. Container. Hit enter. Enter. Okay, now you put the text position in it. Okay. Now the text container is at zero, zero, zero. Okay. Zero, zero, zero. So what we can do is we can force the rotation of this. Let's check out the rotation. See, it's rotation zero, 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 even when it's, out, it's outside the player. So we can always force the text container's rotation to be zero, zero, zero all the mm -hmm. time. Okay. That's fairly easy to do. You will do it in updates. So now let's change the thing to say one ST. Type ST first. Okay, now did you know that Text Mesh Pro has loads of cool little tags? What? Like what? Now, open an HTML tag here. Okay, so like this Type one? Type SUP. So. Close it. Wow. And now open another one. Slash SUP. Okay, wait, wait. Slash. SUP. So. Yeah. Now one thing that I don't like is how close it parses it, so I usually put a space right here. And now it looks pretty cool, right? First, mm -hmm. we can clearly see. Let's see how it looks like when we maximized. Yeah, that's not bad. I think this is pretty good. And plus, the one needs to be read more, read more than this. To... Yeah, no, but I'm just saying, I think it looks pretty good in general. Uh, right, so <sighs> what well, else do we need to do? We need to change the color of this, right? There's a few things we're going to have to do with and this. And we particular. can steal it from the score. We can steal the color thing from the score. I don't know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. I understand. Yeah. Um, well, we'll see how we'll do that. Actually, no, from these are instructions. We color player colors and stuff. Yeah, we can use that. We can definitely use that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we're going to have to do is... Um, well, I got a few ideas. All right. Okay. So let's go now back to... The player because we need to set this up in setup right so we're gonna need so we have race position we're gonna use it later now here let's create a couple of private things so go private okay wait a minute private now text mesh pro isn't here almost certainly we only have one library we're using so there's two options we can use it either use it or access it on the fly once i think we should probably use it so go using tm pro TM Pro, there it is, semicolon. Okay, so private text mesh pro. Okay. Eh. Mesh pro. Mesh pro. Yeah. And uh, call this one TM underscore. TM underscore. Uh, race position. Race position. Position. Semicolon. Okay. And inside setup, we're going to find that. But before we do that, we're also going to have a private transform. Private transform. Yeah. 
and call this one race position container. <laughs> it's a bit of a mouthful. Race. What do you mean by that? That it's long. Position container. I'm pretty sure we've had longer ones than this. Probably. Con container. Container. Semicolon. Save. Okay. So let's copy this now and paste it, say, here. Uh, actually, no. Undo twice. Okay. Paste it here. And go equals transform.find. Dot find. Yeah, open round. Open quote. Now I don't remember its name, so let's go find it. It's uh, text container. Copy. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay. Paste. Close okay. the quote. Close the round bracket. Semicolon. Okay, close the quote. No, nope, that's, that's no, a that's the column, not a quote. Close the code. Okay, hit enter. Enter. Now go TM race position. So just TM should already be there. TM. TM yeah, race done. position. Equals. Equals. Race position container. Race position. One down. Container. Uh, dot. Done. Find. Find. Now wait, my open yeah, open router open quote. Okay, we call it text underscore position. Copy. Mm -hmm. Paste. Close quote. Close bracket. Dot get component. Text smash pro. Yeah, back to the keys. Com. Component. Yeah. Text smash pro. There it is, there it is. Close, open, close round. Semicolon. In, um, wait a second, I think you pressed caps lock. Oh, okay, so, um, so what we should do is we should have a function that updates um, the position, the text here. Uh, we should also have something that allows us to constantly update the rotation of the race position container. Mm -hmm. Now that's fairly easy. We're just going to do it in update. Okay. Actually, it's within late update. So go public. Uh, my bad. Void late update. Why late? I'll explain it in a moment. Late update. Oh. Enough with caps lock. Oh, uh, sorry. That's why it was. Good. Update. Okay, open close round, opens quickly, enter into closing. Okay, save. So what late update does is it's exactly like update, but it waits after all of the other updates are done. Okay. So basically when the entire update cycle is finished, late update gets run. Often you would put stuff that you do on the camera in late update. Now, okay. because we have movement and rotations happening during the frame, we want after the frame to apply the rotation to the text to force it to be straight. Now, mm -hmm. I have a question for you. Should we change the local rotation of the text or should we change the general, the world rotation of the text? Well, the local rotation will de depend on the, on the actual object, right? So do we want that? No. We want it to be independent of the object. Therefore, we're going to say we'll say world rotation. race position container dot rotation. Race position, position container, container dot rotation dot rotation. No rotation. Rotation equals. Do you remember how we say no rotation at all? Quaternion dot identity. Yes. So do that. Do okay. that. Why though? Why identity? I did be bad. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, I'll tell you what. The day your old man understands quaternions, I'll be a very rich man, I think. Okay? I don't understand quaternions. They just do themselves. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried. Uh, I mean, not with very much effort, but I have tried a bit. And I don't have a clue how they work. 
Uh, <clears throat> somebody must have coded them, though. Yes, somebody very clever. <laughs> somebody yeah. way cleverer than me. Uh, all right, so quaternion.identity. So in late update, this keeps on resetting to a rotation of a zero, zero, zero. Um, okay, so that's one part that we wanted to do. The second part that we need to do is that updating of uh, updating of positions. Mm -hmm. And that needs to happen every time a movement is finished. The problem mm -hmm. is it should probably... No, I mean, hmm, I wonder. Check for overtake... No, that's not... Oh, interesting. Uh, apparently this one was meant to give us score, but we've already dealt with the score, so I'm a bit confused mm -hmm. by this. Yeah. Give the score for overtake. Mm. Okay. Just cut this. Even if it's a bull, right? it doesn't matter. Put it here. Is that... Yeah. And put a semicolon at the end. Yeah, save. So... But now it just says game editor. Take malus, PM, take malus. So the the player motor does most of the does all of the movement, right? So we now know that we've got execute malus and execute move, mm -hmm. and uh, you know what? I think that the position should be checked by the game manager because the game manager should know should know at all times what every player is doing. Okay. I think that's better. So we are gonna go to the game manager. And uh, we should do it when a completed move has happened. Okay. Yeah. That's what we should do. So, in receive... Oh, okay. Receive completed move evaluates the landing tile. Uh, hmm. I'm thinking. Yeah. Well, I guess here we can do it. Right? So... Mm -hmm. But then when you evaluate, all sorts of things can happen. You can either change the turn or not. So no, it should happen after evaluate landing tile. So let's do it here. Here we're going to create a new void, um, which we're going to call, go ahead, void, uh, update. Race positions. Positions. Uh, open a round, close the round. Yeah. That was a pass. Okay, save. Um, so let me take a look at the player real quick. Yeah, we still have nothing for this, and this is a private. So this one we'll need. We need a public function here as well. So, so go public. Void uh, update raised position. Yeah, so open round, close round. Uh, it's actually going to need some more than that. Yeah, close it. Okay, and now here go int pause pos <laughs> equals minus one so there's going to be no position at the start yeah save and we're going to call copy this update race position we're going to call it in setup here paste it open close round semicolon okay just one semicolon, not two. I'm Save. Sorry. And copy TM race position. And here we are going to make decisions later. For now, simply say if pause, pause lower than zero, close it. Open squiggly, enter, enter, close it. Else, open squiggly, enter, enter, close it. Close it. And here you're going to paste this. Dot set text. Text. Yeah. Set text. Now open around. Okay, now this one's going to be 
uh, nothing. So put two quotes, quote, quote, close it, semicolon. To set the text to nothing? That's right. So we will get completely empty text when we, uh, when we start, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because we don't know, uh, we don't know where we're at yet. Yeah. Um, which gives us a pretty good idea of what the situation is in terms of uh, the game manager here because update race position is going to have to check if any of them doesn't have one mm -hmm. uh, so it gets ignored for for the test um, so let's think about this so we have the IDs of the players which are mm -hmm. 0, 1, 2 and 3 so that's fairly comfy but how do we check who is furthest ahead? We clearly need at least two concepts. We need to see who is the farthest in terms of tiles. That's one concept. And the other mm -hmm. concept is who has how many laps done. So we are going to have to add that idea. So let's go to the player and right here go public int int laps. Everything went wrong. Uh, so you're right. Ooh, apps. Oh. Now we have the zero. You're fighting with the keyboard. <laughs> okay, save. Yeah, I haven't practiced. So copy laps. And right here. Wait, Base it, laps. Yeah, that's sure. I wanted it later, but that's oh, fine. Sorry. Oh, sorry. It's fine, it's fine there. Equals zero. Laps equals zero semicolon. Yeah, so save. Whenever we set up, we have no laps done yet. Mm -hmm. And laps needs to go up every time we come, we reach the start tile, which we know exactly when we do. Because we do have a... Uh, where is it? Is it evaluate, evaluate landing? I don't think so. Ah, oh, yeah, start. No, no, it's not this. It's not this. It's somewhere else. I think it's probably in player motor. Uh, no, then it's in player. <laughs> I can't remember our own code. Uh, check for overtake. Maybe that one has it. Is this spaghetti code? A little bit. What do you mean spaghetti code? It's code that interreferences other places and it's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Spaghetti code. Where in the world is it? Check. Oh, I'm, bo I'm bored now. Uh, where are you? What are you looking for? Game manager overtake next tile. Check for overtake. Right, so overtake. There it is. Score type overtake. So that's the one for score type overtake. Okay, look, go, go, control, hit control F now. And type, wait, and type cross S. Okay, stop, stop. It's here. Public get tile. If returnable is cross start. Okay, so this is where we we find out that we have crossed the start. Mm -hmm. So uh, the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna say this: uh, list to list players, list in sequence, active player. Dot copy all of that. Paste laps. Yeah, plus plus. So the laps go up. Oh, no, has no brackets, right? Yeah, no brackets. When, no when whenever we cross the start, we get one extra lap, right? Mm -hmm. So it's gonna help us calculate who's first, right? Um, so, we're going to give some kind of score to each player and then when we have the score for each player uh, we're going to know who is first and for that I think we're going to use a sorted dictionary. What sort of dish dictionary? So a dictionary is like a more complicated list. You've never done this, so it's a good moment for me to explain it. So a dictionary is like a list, but okay. instead of it being ordered by ints, 
okay, the same okay. way as an array would be or a list would be. It's ordered by some other data type that you choose, whatever, oh. whatever you want. So it's like a list with different types of data type. Uh, so no. a very complicated array? No, like no, no, no. It's, it's like an array made of two separate parts where one of them is the key and the other one is the value. Okay. So in an array, you only have values, right? Because the mm -hmm. key is implicitly an int. That's why you can say for int i equals zero to a length of the array i plus plus, right? Because mm -hmm. you're iterating through each element using that int. You can't do that in an in a dictionary. Dictionary. The dictionary you, has yeah. a different key. You could have a float as a key, for example. Mm -hmm. So a sorted dictionary actually orders them lowest to highest. Okay. okay? Uh, which is rather nice. And uh, why would we do that? Because as a key, we will put uh, the thing that needs to be ordered, which is the score. Okay. By score, I don't mean the points of the player. I mean this idea of score that we'll calculate now. Anyway, let's get started so you'll understand soon. Uh, let's go right here and go private. Does it use something else other than system collections? I think it's system collect. Use two hands, Zoe, and sit properly, please. Sorry. Okay, public. Private, not public. Private. 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 Okay. Sorted dictionary. So start sort. Sorted dictionary. This one. Yeah, yeah. Now you need to open an off type bracket. So this and one. here you're going to type int, comma, int. Int. So we're making it an int. We're going to make a list that has ints as keys and ints as values. Now close that. And now we'll call it dict, D-I-C-T, underscore, and call it race positions. Race positions. Positions. Semicolon. Done. Save. Done. Okay. Now we need to go and initialize it, so copy it. Let's see what we have in awake. Nothing. And start, that's where we initialize everything. So we're going to do it right here. Paste it. Go equals new. Equals new. Space. Tab. Open, close, round, semicolon. Save. Okay. Now, what we need to do is as soon as we want to calculate, we need to clear it. So paste it. Dot clear. Down. Capital C, you forgot. Oh, sorry. Open, close around, semicolon. Okay, hit enter. So we've cleared the dictionary. Now what we need to do is we need to attribute the score to each player and then add it. We're also going to have to make a few tests. So let's create a, a variable on the fly here. Call it int score. Yeah. Int score. Semicolon. Save. Now create a normal for loop right here. Yeah, you forgot the bracket. It will never work without a bracket. It won't. For int i equals zero. Don't worry about the spaces. Semicolon. Uh, i lower than player count. Semicolon i plus plus. Close the round, open squiggly, enter, enter, close squiggly. All right, so we got the for loop. We're going to go through all of the players and we're going to collect their information about which tile they're on, they're on, which should be gotten from current tile. Now I want to see if the tile has an ID. Yes, it does. And it is public, right? That's great because the IDs are in order, if you remember. Okay, so mm -hmm. save now. And then what we're going to do is, well, we're going to figure out the math together. Okay, so what you're going to say now is you're going to say score. Okay, score. Equals. Equals. And we're going to say uh, list of players. List of players. List of players. And this time we don't have to go through the order of turns. It doesn't matter. Open a square bracket and you go uh, I. Close it. Yeah, list players i dot laps times. Mm, it's plus. 
Times is over here. Yeah, times. Uh, and now you're going to say... Uh, I think we have a variable for tiles. What's it called? Wait a moment. Where are you, tiles? Tiles. Tiles. <laughs> Tile core materials. Start tiles. Tiles. Copy this. And it's an array, so it's tiles.length. Paste. Dot length. Uh, plus. Uh, copy all of this. Paste it here. And now here you're going to type current tile dot id dot id id yeah tab semicolon so let's figure out the mathematics of this <clears throat> so we're going to give a value of to an int right and what are we going to take we're going to take the laps when you start how many laps do you have None. None. So zero. Zero times anything makes? Zero times anything makes zero. So on the first lap, then we're only going to get this bit, which means we're going to get the tile ID. Suppose I'm on tile 13, I would okay. therefore have 13 points. Yes. Right? Fairly easy. Uh, now, so 13 points. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, suppose that um, I... Um, Suppose that I instead am on lap number two, mm -hmm. right? And you s remember it goes laps plus plus. So laps would be what value? Laps would be, wait, two. Uh, after the first right lap. Now it's nothing? One. Yeah, it we... would be one. That's yes. right. So we get one here times what? The length of the tiles, which is? Which is the length of the tiles. You forgot. 62. 62, I think. Yes. So Which 62 times 1 makes? 62. Right. And let's say I'm on tile 2. It's 64. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's how we get a, a correct score all the time, depending on what lap we're on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's pretty important. Mm -hmm. um, now, as you, as you know, and the audience probably also remembers, we have a bit of a bug, which is if you get overtaken on the start line, you can actually get the start again and increase by one more lap. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it's an interesting conundrum. We would need to like figure out how to actually sort that out. I think we will simply ignore it for now in the sense that it's a bit of a quirk, right? If you're lucky enough to be overtaken right there, you can actually uh, get, to start. get that. Or we can make it so that when you get overtaken and get pushed behind the start, you lose the, you lose the points uh, mm. that you gain or something, but I don't think we can do that. Anyway, we would need to think about that. For now, we're simply going to accept that as an interesting quirk of the game. Mm -hmm. Okay, so anyway, so we got the score now, and what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add this score to the dictionary. Now, we need to be careful because we can't simply add it like that because dictionaries do not accept duplicate values. Uh, rather, they do not accept duplicate keys. Okay. If they get the same key twice... They become very unhappy. Okay. Okay, but so we're gonna give two scores. Uh, kinda. So I've just realized that. Wait, is that a problem? No, I don't think so. Ah, no, we don't need to check that. Do you know why? Why? It's never possible for our cars to be on the same tile at the same time. Mm -hmm. Never. Because otherwise, one of them is gonna get overtaken. That's right. It's not possible. We get overtakes. Now, there's one more thing that we also need to consider, which is we could have a tile of minus one. Right? That's true. Uh, and let's go and take a look where what we assign to the player. And I think it's the position. Right? Mm -hmm. So I think we say pause is minus one uh, when we first um, set it up. Uh, update pos race position pause is minus one right so here we need to actually uh, copy this race position over here okay. paste it here and go equals pause pass pause pop pop so, 
Okay, save. So now we know the race position. So we can go and check the race position. And we're going to say if the race position is minus one, mm -hmm. um, we are simply going to give a score of minus one. Okay. Uh, so go here, copy all of this, okay. and go if paste dot uh, no undo. For some reason, it didn't copy this. Copy paste dot race position. It's already there. The dot race position. There it is. Race position lower than zero. Open, close the round. So what are you now? No, so, sorry. Close the round bracket. Press the wrong one. Open the squiggly. Enter, enter, close it. Else, open another. Enter, enter, close it. Yes. Enter, enter, close it. Save. Save. So, if race position is lower than one, then go score equals minus one. Minus one. Semicolon. Save. Okay. Now, cut. Paste. Um, save. Okay. So again, we're going to have that problem again with the dictionary because if score is minus one multiple players, which in the beginning is always true, mm -hmm. uh, we are going to have to do something with those players. And... Um, I'll tell you what, I can't change my mind. I think what we need to do is we need to give them whatever position we have uh, at the beginning. So rather, okay. whatever turn we go. Okay, so say, so for example, if I'm first to go and I'm blue, I'm going to get the first written on my head. And mm -hmm. if you're the third to go and you're yellow, you're going to get third written on top of your head. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yes. Okay, so... But what if, like, the red rolls a two, but then... The yellow follows and rolls a seven. Well, then it it gets reevaluated every time, but only with valid vehicles. If it's not valid, then we uh, we don't um, we leave it as it is. Basically. What do you mean by valid vehicles? Like so on the board? So only yeah, vehicles that are on the board. When we start, we're not on the board. We're on the start tiles. Remember? Mm -hmm. So those are not valid vehicles. We're all not valid at the start. That's right. I cannot compare to somebody who isn't on the board. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, we need to make a few changes. <clears throat> so here, instead of this, of position equals minus one, let's remove this. Save. Okay. So in this update race position, we're also going to remove it from here because we need to make a change here. We're going to say int. Okay. Uh, go first turn or something. Or turn position, whatever. Yeah, first turn, it's fine. Doesn't particularly matter. Save. Okay. Now let's go to the game manager and see how we set up the players. Okay. There it is, but before we set up the turns, which is absolutely perfect. It's exactly what we want. Right? Mm -hmm. So list turn sequence, and then we we get the player. So mm -hmm. we can get this list turn sequence. So set up players right here, set up I, and here you go comma, and you go copy, okay. paste it here, okay. open a square, okay, okay. go I, close the square. Now we're gonna make something a bit weird, okay? Save for a moment. We That's are gonna say minus. So we're going to send it the negative of the turn we're on right now. Okay. Why? Yeah. Um, because uh, that way we will be able to um, know that these are not valid positions. So in, instead of us uh, getting 0, 1, 2, 3, we're going to mm -hmm. get minus 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. And you know minus 0 doesn't really work. So we're yeah. actually going to make a change there too. We're going to say minus one. So we are going to add another minus one. So we get minus one, minus okay. two, minus three, minus four. Okay. Now minus four. Who is minus four? Minus, minus four, four is the fourth player. That's right. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so the one who goes fourth. 
Yes. It, hmm, I wonder if this works. I'm actually kind of curious. Um, yeah, so before we continue doing anything here, let's test that this makes any sense. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the plab okay. right here and we're going to pass it first turn. What? Pass it? No, no, just oh. go first turn. For first turn, turn, okay. And here go debug.log. Now open oh, around. Hand again. And here you're going to say copy car ID, copy it, paste it here, go plus, put a quote, space, minus, 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 space, quote, plus, first turn. Close the round, semicolon. Okay, so let's simply see what happens when we press play. We should get four debug messages. Huh? Mm -hmm. Well, that didn't happen. Okay. Well, we forgot to leave Yeah, this we forgot card. the player, which is an interesting problem. Let's apply, and now we can delete him. All right, so let's see now, because now it should be a bit more... Cr yeah, they all say first. Right? Mm -hmm. But we didn't get that whole setup, which surprises me. Uh, I'm very worried. Of, oh, guess who forgot to bloody turn off our friend? The Dropbox. Dropbox. And wait, yeah. now let's make it remember things. Hit Control S to save. Wait, oops, sorry, there wasn't Control S. Save now. Okay, good. Now, if you would please, <laughs> no, <laughs> man, do I hate that annoying thing about the Dropbox that I keep on forgetting, by the way. Uh, so how do we this do This isn't that? saved. Hmm? This is not saved. Yeah, give it a save now. It, it doesn't make a difference. But I want to check the player here. So it does have race position. It does have score. But it simply doesn't remember this. So go s bull. Hello. I don't know. Quickly, bull h. Save, bull and it's fine. I don't h. care. Save. Okay. Now it should complain. There. Now yep. we know that the code has updated correctly. Save. Okay. Now let's remove maximize and play so we can see clearly. There we go. Thank you. All right. So you see, player zero, which is red, has. Uh, minus four. Player one is minus one. Player two is minus two, and player three is minus three. Therefore, <laughs> player zero minus. Okay, that didn't go so well. <laughs> Which is wait, player one. Who's player one? No, no. But wait a moment. Why is yellow going first? If yellow is going first, so yellow is what? Player three. Is I it? Think. Are you sure? Let's go take a look. No, wait. It did. Where are the player colors? Game scores, PFX styles, PFX names, dice revolutions, player colors. Okay, so yellow is our last player, oh, therefore it's so? player three. And so he... it's going third, but it says yellow's turn for space to roll. That's right, I probably got that, um, I got the turn stuff wrong here in the game manager. I knew we, we had to test this because I was quite confident something was going to be wrong. <laughs> I, I expected it. Wrong. So right here... I know that the minus one is fine. I know that the negative is fine, but I think the turn sequence works backwards. So it's not based on player. I is wrong here. Mm, okay. I think. Hmm. Let me think this through. So set up turns, blah, blah, blah. Player count turns, add, blah, blah, blah. Randomize turns count sure add turns random turns remove at random um, So The turn So this needs the the player okay. in order to know which value it gets Okay, so tell you what we'll do for now we'll remove this minus one and we'll put this like this to see if it's at least correct. Okay. Your father is getting badly confused. 
All right, so zero, one, two, three, so zero. So red should go first. Okay, that's working correctly. Now the second one should be uh, three, should be yellow. Okay. Hurry up, red. Now green? No, it's green. It's green. It's green. <laughs> so let's try. Uh, three is green, though. No, no wait. That's two. That's two. I'm getting confused with actual numbers. Okay, now then it's yellow's turn. So for some reason, green were first, then yellow. I hope we don't have bugs in other places, which is possible. I mean, all I want to know is the <laughs> is the sequence of turns here. That's really it. So, somehow, blue was supposed to be last, and instead it isn't. <sighs> Let me see something else that uses list turn sequence. Uh, it's evaluate landing tile. So active player. Yeah, but active player is, yeah, I know what's going on. I don't know how to explain it, but I know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So the list of players has uh, values between zero and, and three, and that's fine. Then the list turn sequence also has values between zero and three, but those depend on the, the, the active player, which just goes up and it's independent from the players. Okay. So, at, but at that point, yeah, because it can't be I, it needs to be, well, hmm. So, let's see here. Here it says change turn zero, specific, yeah, because we give it a zero. But if it's not specific, it just goes up, and then it goes back down to restarting. Active player zero, check turn available, active player plus plus, active player, active player goes back to zero. Yeah, I understand that. So it's the active player. But so this will give us the value of the player we want. I'm appallingly confused now. No, because, I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, that's fine. There should be some kind of logically visible pattern between these two numbers, but there doesn't seem to be. So, okay, green's turn, and you see it says zero, 02. That's correct. This is actually correct. So, the first one's green. And green is. And the green two. is two, so it, that's that's that's, that's fine. Correct. Now the next one should be ah, oh, it will be yellow. Do you want to bet? Mm, no, no, look, I'm wrong. <laughs> I don't want to bet because because I'm wrong. Stuff. Uh, well, there it is, one one. Okay, so wait, no, ye yellow was a stupid call. I think the next one is going to be red. Let's see if I'm correct. But this is blue rolling, so yeah, I know. Yes, and then the last one's yellow. Okay, let's see if I figured it out and then I'll explain it. All right, so we started green, yes. Okay, that's expected. The next one is going to be uh, yellow. yellow. And then it's gonna be followed by uh, blue. So let's, and then last one, red. I don't know why I get confused by such simplistic things. Yeah, of course we gotta go again because the game is want wants to make us suffer. Not really. We made the code, so that's true. Okay, yellow, good. That's correct. And if the next one's blue, I cracked the code, <laughs> which is a lot more grandiose than it actually is. Yes. Okay. So here's how the the number on the left tells mm -hmm. us uh, the the sequence of turns, and the number on the right tells us. Uh, 
what position we're in. Um, Rather, vice versa. This one will tell us who, and this one will tell us when. Okay. So zero, one, two, three. This is the actual sequence in which they go, which is a problem because. So like these are flipped. Yes. Um, we just never thought we would ever need to know who goes first. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's basically the problem, and now we kind of do. So we cannot actually send it this information. Uh, at least I don't think so, uh, because that's what we're sending it as position. Mm. Um, how do we do that? How do we send which positions we're in based on whose turn it is to go first? Hmm. I'm trying to think. So in this case, right, player zero gets to go last. So how do we deduce this number from there? I don't know that we can. Wait. Player zero, it says the player's here. Yeah, if you could kind Sorry. of stop whacking the microphone, that'd be great. Sorry, then. But yeah. if player zero is the player and it's last, last at three, that is correct. I don't know what you just said. But I think you're getting confused. You're not th interpreting this correctly. Oh. This is showing you the idea of the player first and then what our turn thinks. But our turn tells us the idea of the player. I th also, I thought that this was the idea of the player, and this was the. Yeah, turn I told you, you got it backwards, and and the reason why you got it backwards is because it is backwards in the code right now. Uh, it's not backwards anyway. We we never deal with the, the whose turn it is, but I think I figured out how we can get there. Okay. Yes, I think I figured out how we can get there. And then we have to stop. Uh, not yet, it's too soon. It's, only yeah, yeah, yeah. it's 10 minutes to go and we haven't done enough. So, um, what we need to do is... We need to get the index of that and i think it's possible to do this index find index what does this do find is predicate match find last index find index index of i think is what we want so index of and then you need to feed it a certain number and if you feed it i it should tell you which index we are at Let's try and see this. Okay. Okay. So player one, play. so red is now going to go second. Blue is first. That's correct. Okay. I think we got it. I'll explain what this is to you in a moment. Okay. okay. So one, two, three. Yes. Yes. And uh, then the next one is going to be green and the last one is going to be yellow. Yes. We got it. Well, you got it, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. You can't get this type of stuff because you don't know what's going on. So, okay. L you can do many things with lists. One of the things you can do is you can search for something inside that list, knowing what you want to find, and it will okay. return to you the index of it. So, because this list turn sequence contains the IDs of the players just scrambled in a different order, I want to okay. know which spots in that order they are. Okay, so okay. suppose I feed it zero, okay, and zero is the third one in the list, index of is going to return number two. Okay. Do you understand? And now we can finally do minus list and, and then, then minus, one. minus one and then figure out the algorithm for this. So there we go. This now let's let's give it another test and I'm sure I'll I'll be able to actually guess without looking. So I'm covering the screen here. Okay, so the first player to go will be red. Yes. The second player to go will be blue. And the third now you can actually uncover it. The third player to go will be did I say blue? I meant yellow. The the third the third player to go will be blue, and the fourth player to go will be green. Let's see if this is correct. This is yellow. So red, yellow, blue, green. 
That's the sequence. Yes. Okay. We're good. Yes, that's correct. So now we have them in the right order and it's uh, descending, meaning that whoever's first has the highest value. Mm -hmm. So we can still compare the scores and just leave them like that. We don't even need to worry about this. Um, but yeah, instead of this, we're going to put copy all of this, okay. paste it here and go position or whatever we call it, race position. There it is. Okay, save. So if we're negatives, okay, we're just going to return the race position mm. uh, because they're already correctly ordered in negatives, meaning that the lowest, the highest negative is mm -hmm. going to be the, the first one to go. So minus one is the first one to go. Minus two is the second one to go. Wait, the highest negative? It yeah, well, the highest when you, negative would be the last negative? Well, I know what you're saying because you're thinking in human language, but in math, the highest negative is the one that is the least negative. Oh. <laughs> uh, think about it, right? The highest number between minus one and minus four is? The highest number between minus one and minus four is, well, we're in the minus area, so. So? Which one is the highest? Oh, the highest, so minus one. That's yeah. correct. The lowest right? would be We're minus talking one. about uh, the absolute concept of positive and negative here. Okay. Now, all right, we've got the scores, brilliant. <laughs> the first part is done. Now, the second part is adding these scores to the sorted dictionary. Mm -hmm. Now, the dictionary is being reset here. Look at the code. Yep. Okay, copy the dictionary. Okay. Mm Paste it here. Well, I press control B. I have no idea what you're doing. Paste it. Okay. Dot. Add. Open round. And here you're going to feed it the following. Score. Score. Comma. comma I. I. Close the bracket. Oh. Is. Is. Close the bracket. Close the bracket. Semicolon. Semicolon. Save. Yes. And then here at the end, we're going to go through the entire dictionary. Go for each. Okay, now this one is complicated. Each. For each, open around bracket. Open around. How is these called? I think it's called key value, something like that. Try key. Key. Key value pair. <laughs> That's the one. Key value pair. Open uh, of type. Int, comma, int. Int, comma, int. Close it. Close it. You close the off type oh, banana. Close the off type. Sorry. Okay. Spa then. Space. Space. Now you need to give it a name. Let's call it. Uh, um, let's call it P. Whatever for pair. P. Space. In. Paste to the dictionary. Close the round bracket. Open a squiggly. Enter. Enter. Close the squiggly. Do you remember for each loops? Mm, well. No, sorry. That's okay. So a for loop allows you to use a save uh, allows you to use a an int as mm, is as, okay. as this index that you can uh, as the iterator we call it for which you can go through all of the elements in a list now okay. or in an array. Now we can't do this with a dictionary, so we must use a for each at least to my knowledge uh, and uh, the for each. Uh, loop instead allows you to assign a certain object as an iterator itself. So let's say you okay. have a list of transforms, you would assign a certain transform as the iteration element. So you would say for each transform T in list of transforms. Mm -hmm. So it would start with the first transform in the list, then go with the second transform in the list and so on. Now in our case, we have a dictionary, which is in a list, but it's essentially like a list. And what are its elements? Its elements are key value pairs that are mm -hmm. ints and ints. Okay. Right? And because it's sorted, it automatically puts them in ascending order, meaning lower to higher. Okay. Okay. Now, a very important thing about this is that they are all backwards. The person oh. with the highest value is going to be the person who. The last person? Well, no. He's the person who is the furthest ahead. So oh. he's winning. Problem is the dictionary puts him as the last He's element. He's losing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is we need to do it backwards. And what we're going to do is we're going to cheese it a little bit. Okay. Uh, we are going to... Um, yeah, we're going to go backwards. I don't know that it's possible to do uh, for each going backwards. Okay. Uh, so perhaps what we'll do 
is we could simply create a quick list. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of that, but let's do it because it's the cheapest thing I can think of right now. So here, create a private list. Int, I'll type int, list underscore. Position sequence. Position sequence. And see semicolon. Copy this. And we're gonna go to our start function again and right here paste it. Mm, I paste see the wrote space, paste it then. Copy all of this, paste it here. Okay, save. Copy this. Let's go down. Okay, so before we can do anything with this for each, we need to reset this list, so paste it. Dot clear. Clear. Open, close. Semicolon. Save. Now, copy the list again, paste it here, go dot add p dot value. Close the row, semicolon. Now, what does this mean? That we go through the dictionary, remember it's in backwards order, but we are going in the mm -hmm. straight order. Okay, so we're getting last to first. Okay? okay, and we're saying, okay, take this list, clean it, and now that it's empty, add the first element, the last player. We're getting the value, not the key. The key is what puts things in order. The value is the ID of the player, remember? Okay, mm -hmm. so we're giving it the ID of the player, awesome. And now that we've got the ID of the player in the wrong order, after we're done with this, we're mm -hmm. gonna do a, another thing. Paste the list, okay. go dot, dot, reverse. I didn't know a function like that existed. Open, close round semicolon so this is but that's why lists have so many cool little things that you can do with them i i prefer lists to arrays very very often though arrays are, are nice because they're static but um lists are like you can change them you can add stuff remove stuff etc and flip you can things. you can flip them and if you use a library called link link l-i-n-q it's like the zelda link. guy just with a q <laughs> uh link it allows you to do loads more things with lists it's pretty mental what you can do with them which is very okay. nice but at any rate we don't need any of that but now we reversed it what does this mean it means that whoever's first is now first <laughs> and whoever's <laughs> last is now last yeah right and so finally we can go and update the positions of all of the players you mean the text yeah sure and uh uh let me think this through right and we can simply say for int i equals zero i lower than player count and then semicolon i plus plus close around there save um right so we got this and what we're gonna say is list underscore players uh now wait we may be tempted to go i but i don't think we want that what we want is what we want is this we want copy list position sequence paste it here i uh, of i so yeah I close it, close it again, dot, update, oh, dot, right. update, whatever we called it, race position, open around, I, close the round, semicolon. Okay, so what does this mean? That we're going to go to our, our players, we're going to feed the whoever's first, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And we're going to give it the position of first, which is zero, mm -hmm. right? Then we're going to go to the second player, which is player... Well, we don't know whoever the second player is, but we're going to go to whoever the player in second position is, list sequence one, right? And we're going to give it the position of second one, mm -hmm. and so on. So that's how we update all of the race positions. 
So let's go uh, to I have a worry here. There's only one problem right here, um, which is um, we are going to have to remember to update the race positions as soon as we take a turn. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Give me the glasses. You can't clean them with that. Sorry. That's fine. Okay. Now let's focus. We need to try to finish this. So. Yes. Uh, update race position needs to happen on the first turn. If I remember correctly, we actually have something for the first turn. I don't remember where it is, but it should... First move. There it is. First move is true. Uh, hit control F for me. Okay. So if first move is true, here we need to update position um, to anything other than uh, other than a negative number. The worry is that we do not know where we are at. Okay. So perhaps if we update it based on a negative number, we could then Im reverse it. Yes, yes, there we go. That's how we'll fix it. We don't actually care about this. We care about this. So if we get a negative one, instead of updating by nothing, what are we going to do? We're going to update them backwards. Okay. Uh, so... Um, what was it that we were going to do? Uh, I think it was minus one, minus two, minus three, and minus four, or something like that. Yes. Uh, now, minus one was the first one to go. At least I think that was the case, wasn't it? Let's test it, because I can't remember, because that is slow. Okay, so let's just look down here. Minus one should be blue. Yes, okay. So, minus one. That's, that's who goes first. Um... So, what we need to do is simply say, I don't know, I'm not sure, because if it's negative, it still help us, helps us know things. We're going to say absolute of that number and then decrease it by one. That's our only option. So let's begin with that. Uh, we're going to need to go to our little game manager here and right here create a public string array. Public. String array. And call this one uh, race position names. Position names. I'm typing with one hand now because I'm trying to hurry. Yeah. Semicolon. All right. So now that we got race position names. We should really put some categories here. Okay. So four. Now remember how we call those. We call them first. Right. Okay. Wait. Let me drag a player here. Text container. That's how we wrote it. Copy this. Why did they call it? Hit the delete key for me. So. Okay, paste like it here, 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 stop. Okay, two, three, four, N D, N D, N D, R D, R D, T H, wait, T H, T H, save. Okay, so now player here. If we're loading this, we are going to say, um, and you're going to write this. You're going to write game manager dot script dot game manager dot script dot, dot race race position names. Position this one names. open square bracket square mm, square sorry and feed it math f math f dot abs Abs. Open round. Open race round. position. Race. I have no idea why you keep on position. typing variables capital. Uh, close the round. Minus one. Minus one. Close the square bracket. Save. Okay, so this is going to give us uh, that thing. Let's see if this is correct. It should already be. 
So let's see, now we should get at least first, second, third, and fourth, and they should actually match. There. First, second, third, and fourth. So yellow, red, blue, green. Let's see if that's true. Yellow, yeah, that's definitely it's true. It's kind of hard to read. Yeah, well, sure, I made it really, really tiny, right? If you make it bigger, it's much easier to read. That so one's... First, okay. <laughs> now, second. Now, they're not getting re-evaluated, so it's going to be wrong. In this case, second is going to overtake first, and we're not going to see that change. See, mm -hmm. it still says second and first. But at least we know they are correctly assigned at start, mm -hmm. right? Now, the problem with that is, yes, whenever we get the first turn, we need to change our race position, and that's what we're going to do. So move toward, yes, right here, and here go race position equals zero or something. Semicolon. Yes. So now our evaluation system down here, which checks which position, is not going to say my race position is lower one because it isn't. So it's actually going to do the correct scoring. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and now we're basically ready. So copy this, update race positions, and you are going to paste it. Uh, at the end of the evaluation, I suppose. So, wait a moment. Set up turns, blah, 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 blah. Where is it? Uh, receive completed move. Here, paste it. Semicolon. Okay. So, let's see how this works. Time to test if our labor <laughs> has what? led to anything. It's taken us quite a bit. Okay, so first we'll be green. Awesome. Go green. He almost got 12, except he got 7. Except he got 7. <laughs> so that's well off. Okay, let's but see if we get an overtake. Six. Yes, we do. Okay, ready? No. This one should get us okay, the overtake, you... and now it should turn first. No, it didn't. It did not. Okay. Our labor did not work. Oh, wait. Null reference. Uh... Null reference. Tiles, length, list, players, high, current tile. Doesn't have a current tile. That's the only possibility. Okay. Type debug log i. Debug dot log. Open round bracket. I. Yeah. And since we're here, let's add a bit of information too. Plus. Dash dash dash. Plus. And go copy this paste it here. save and see if we even get here so i'm going to remove maximize and play ta -da 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 -da. oh we can remove that debug log it doesn't matter to us anymore so green is going and it should get evaluated now okay so that worked and we got a 2 and a 10 so the current tile is a 10 Let's see, you rolled a five, null reference. So zero got a null reference. That's the issue, that somehow zero got its turn changed, but that makes no sense because zero hasn't played yet. Oh, because we've got the turn before the guy landed there. I think that's what happened. Okay, so we cannot yet change here. We cannot do this race. Position is zero. Save. Uh, so, update race position. Oh, wait. I think I'm being... If, uh, effectively cautious for no particular reason. I think we don't actually need to change anything manually. Let's see if this works. It should already work, maybe. <laughs> okay, started. I know you don't understand anything of what's happening, I'm sorry. It's getting a bit more complicated. So four, this guy's gonna go on the slick, then fall on the mind and fly backwards and Z. Null reference. Yeah, we've got an all reference right away. Uh, and on the same place. 
you know, I, I know why it's happening, and it's player zero who is red, who shouldn't have gone yet. Somehow, uh, the red player's position uh, has changed. So, copy this as well. And wait a moment. So, I'm going to add another one. Paste it. Save. And let me remove this debug, because it's annoying. It's getting in the way. Okay, here we go. Stop the code. Always better to stop the code before you actually go into changing it. stuff, but you know. Okay, so red starts. Actually, I think that this is a bad example because it's not going to give us that bug. Yeah, thought so. Um, red is now happily obtaining a position, but green may complain. Blue may complain, actually. Yes. Green See? complained. Blue complained. Blue. No, uh, One right. is blue, right? And his position is two. Uh, so, but wait, if its position is two... Wait, blue's on the star place right now. Yeah, I know. But it still thinks that its race position is two, which would be just fine for us. So I'm not sure I understand. Um... Hmm. Okay, so here's what we can do, which is going to be pretty good, I think. So we can check if the current tile is, uh, yeah, that's a way better test. That's a way better test. Uh, copy this, paste it here, and go not null. I mean, rather, equals equals null. Safe. So if we don't have a current tile, we can't search for it, right? And mm -hmm. we're just going to accept our current race position. If we do have one, then we're not going to accept our current race position. And this should actually already work. Come on. Work. Work. We all want to go to sleep. Okay, so yellow's first. It's all correct. Now, yellow has a five goes in the mine, falls backwards. There you go, we've got a tile. Hooray. Except the tile says five, but we don't worry about it. Okay, hit play. Come on, work. Work, just work. <laughs> Six, okay, we work, got the overtake. Work, work, it worked. It did work, except the change hasn't happened. Oh, then it didn't work. It kind of worked though, at least we don't get a crash. So let's, let's look at player zero, lap zero, score 500, race position is two. Player blue is, look, race position is zero, so it should be first. It should be first, but it's not being first, <laughs> which is fairly odd. I don't understand. So you see the race position, it's, it's, it's zeroth here, mm -hmm. uh, and that's just fine. But here, for some reason, it says it's still one. And I think that this evaluation happens before the movement stops, I guess, or something. Oh, that's interesting. So this, maybe we should do that before we change turns. Hmm. Not sure. So evaluate landing tile is what should change turn. So maybe we should do that before we change turns. Yeah, okay, cut this. Uh, well, technically speaking, though, hmm. because we've just evaluated the landing tiles, so it should should have done that. Wait, wait, no, no, don't don't do anything. I'll tell you what. I think you should go to sleep. So you go to sleep, and I'll quickly finish here with our audience, all right? Okay. Okay, because you're way past your bedtime. Then mommy kills me. That's not nice. Not really, but anyway. Okay, well... Do you want to stay here then till the end? No. Shouldn't shouldn't be too far. No, you're done. I am done. <laughs> you're done. Okay. Well, I I'll only be fixing this bug. I won't be doing anything else. Mm -hmm. Okay. Say bye to the audience. Bye, audience. Bye. Okay. You go quick, quick. Let's not leave any dead time, and I don't want to edit. Yes. There <laughs> uh, we go. Bye. Yeah. All right, audience. It's just you and me now. <clears throat> Right, so the issue here, I think, is that we are making this change 
uh, too early. So we're updating the race position before we actually get that change somehow, which is somewhat surprising. So let me give it another test real quick here just to see what's happening. So green's going to go first. Let's see what the situation is here. So we get a three. All right. And the only one that gets evaluated is green, and that is correct. Now green is evaluated as number three, which means last. That's very odd. So no, that's the current tile. I'm talking rubbish. The race position. See, green is evaluated as race position one which makes extremely little sense. Uh, no, it doesn't, because the others are negative. That's one. But even so, if it's evaluated as position one, then why doesn't it get updated? So player three is the green one, and you see race position is zero, so that's still correct. Oh, I'm getting all confused. Okay, so let's see what red does. Almost certainly red would overtake. Okay, so the overtaking is happening. And now we should get two messages. Okay, so we got, yeah, so we got a problem with how we parse the dictionary. That's why we get a crash as well. So zero is second and green is first. So green goes first, zero is second. I think the problem is with those negatives that we're using from before. Um, yeah, they're being added by score, but I thought that there would still work just fine. Huh. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to check the dictionary. Debug.log. And I'm going to say dictionary, uh, I'm going to say p dot key plus p dot score, uh, p dot value. And let's see what that tells us. I'm going to actually hide this. Okay, try again. Need to fix this and then we're done for the evening. Red. Okay, whoa. Okay, so let's see what the situation is. We've got blue having a score of minus four because blue should be last. That is correct. Now, uh, green has a score of minus three, should be th second to last. G g g yellow, so yeah, wait, uh, I'm confused. Yellow is this guy, yes, yellow is second and red is first. Let's give this another row. I've cleared the console so I can take a look. Yellow roll the nine. It's a little annoying that the, the text knows before the actual uh, dials. All right, so let's see what the situation is here. Blue is zero. Wait, no, 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 red has one point that's that's what we're looking at so red has one point yellow has nine points okay and blue has three points and green has two points I genuinely can't understand if th they they have these values then why are they not updating correctly because if yellow has nine points then yellow surely needs to be first and it is red is last yeah and these are not these are not getting updated properly somehow that's very strange <clears throat> So we clearly have at least two problems. One problem is that these scores get turned into positives, and I'm not sure why. 
Oh, oh hello, we're missing this entire part. <laughs> That's why it's not updating. What a fool. Um, so game manager and just pause. Yeah, that'll do. Uh, now race position is pause. Okay. I'm surprised because if they don't have a current tile, they should remain negative. But they don't seem to want to be. We're gonna have to check. Okay, so this should at least correctly display the text. Things should at least happen, basically. So let's take a look here. So red goes first, awesome. Red is still first, makes perfect sense. Now yellow is almost certainly going to be first at the end of this. So take a look. All right, we already have a problem though. Yellow was fourth and now it's complaining that the key is already in the dictionary because I think that red is first. Yes, yes, red is first. Okay, so let's see here what we have with the dictionary as a situation. So the first turn was minus four, minus three. And as you can see, the second turn, they're all positives. That shouldn't be happening. That should not be happening, uh, but somehow it is. So I need to check the current tile here. And I wonder if the current tile is in fact not null there. So let's take a look here, debug.log. Actually, I think this debug log is pretty decent. So we're going to put it right here and we're actually going to shut this one up. So this one should tell us as we go through the players, um, what the situation is every time we evaluate. So here we don't evaluate anything. So everything is working fine. Okay. Now we evaluated things. Now, as you can see, red has no tile. Blue has no tile and yellow has no tile. That is all correct. So now if we roll again, it's red stern. Yeah, everything is still correct. And now all of a sudden. Okay, so red went first and green is last, which is wrong. And let's see what we've got here. Well, as we can see, that debug is still telling us correct stuff. But somehow race position is wrong. I don't understand why. Yeah, because race position, if we have no tile, should never have changed. So who's changing race position? We need to go take a look on the other side. All right, so update race position with int pause. Race position is pause. Set text, that's fine. Race position is pause. Well, I guess I'm going to change this to only if we're negative. Uh, only if we're positive. So let's try that. But wait, that may... Hmm. I don't think that will change anything because I think that we're sending a positive here. Debug.log and we're gonna say uh, ID, whatever it's called, car ID plus pause. Now I'm gonna start getting confused with all of the, the, these debug logs. So I'm going to add color equals maroon plus car ID plus color. There we go. Let's test this. Yep. 
Okay, these are all correct. So we've received those positions, that's correct. I'm going to clear them because those are fine. Now I want to see this turn, what happens. There. And you can see that positive values are being assigned. And now that the positive values are being assigned, we get that issue. Okay, so we cannot have, and the reason why those positive values are being assigned is because of these. Because of these. So we need to check if the score is negative here in p value. And that's because we're feeding i. Yeah, that's the issue. So, um, here's what we're going to do. If, whoa, if open round list position sequence i is higher or equals to zero, then do this. Otherwise, leave it as it is. I want those negatives to stay, right? Okay, clear this. We know they're correct. And now we want to see some negative stuff staying. Okay, nothing is except these went positive again. Darn it. How is that score not negative? Oh, wait, I'm silly, I think. I'm feeding it p-value. I need to check the... Um, I need to check the p-score. Uh, okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Here, I'm going to say if uh, p-dot-score p-dot-key is lower than zero, then else feed it p value oh no that won't work either <laughs> oh boy am i in a happy camper here yeah that won't work either um So I suppose my only option remains now to check if we have no tile. If we have no tile, I'm not going to do anything. There. I think that will work. My word, this is interesting. So if list players i dot current tile is not null. So if the current tile isn't null of that player whose score is about to be sent, then do the thing. We need to get those negatives to stay. Once we've done that, the game should work. Oh wow, you got a 12, I'm not doing this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I won't get overtaken, I want some overtakes. I want to see if this is working. Oh, are you serious? <laughs> well, it's fine, at least I can test. Okay. Okay, so as you can see, only one person here got updated. I like that. All right, that should work now. Sorry for the sibilating S. All right, so eight. Roll the eight. Reaches the eight. Needs to roll again. It's still one, so second. Okay, we're rolling again. Come on, overtake green. Let's have some fun here. Overtakes green. Turns to first, green turns to second. Amazing. You can probably not see this very well on on the um, on your screens at the moment, but I promise to you, I will I will change that now so you can see it fine. Uh, so, uh oh, that didn't work. So I've got another bug with the with the dictionary situation here um, and I think the reason why this is is because I've overtaken someone whose current tile is still 
there. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to change current tile to next tile and it should solve everything. I hope. So let's go with next tile is not null. And next tile, which should be the same as current tile in next tile. Yeah, I think so. So current tile, not here. Go down here. Do you see any? There's one. Oh, that's in the debug. So I don't particularly care. I think I'll kill this debug, remove this debug. And I'm actually going to remove the player debug as well. I don't think I need it. Okay, and now I'm actually going to put maximize and play, and we're just going to keep an eye out on er for errors. Since I'm here, I might as well um, fix this stuff. So we need to add uh, the color of the text. And it's fairly easy to do, but I am thinking about leaving it just white, you know, for the positions. So yeah, I think I'll do that. So let me go here to my text over here, text position, and simply change this color to white so we get a plain white color for the position caption. All right, testing time. Moment of truth. All right, red goes first, peeps. Mm. Right, we got a six, nice and easy. There we are, parked, awesome. Time to go with yellow. Yellow stays second. Everything is still correct. All right. There we go. We got a seven. Overtake. Overtake. First, second, third, fourth. Awesome. No errors. No errors. One, two, three, four, five. Whoa. And let's check it out. Yes. Everything is looking correct. That's epic. Yep. They're all being updated at the right time. I wonder if I should do it with each and every movement. Because that would be a little bit more dynamic. I think it'd be more interesting. It's something we can possibly do. I get ambitious. Oh man, it's 1 hour 30. <laughs> it's 1 hour 40 actually. Um, okay, I, I promise I'll just take a look at this and see if that works because it, it it should be fun uh so play a motor whichever player motor is executing a move it's then getting a new next tile get tile yeah so check for overtake blah blah blah, blah. and here at the end of the movement when we update that we could do that instead of receive complete move. I mean, I'll leave it where it is, but I'll probably make this one public, right? And then go update race positions. Because in the end of the day, uh, with these modern computers, I mean, repeating functions a bit more often shouldn't be a big deal. So this ha happens at the end of every single tile movement of any player. <laughs> so let's see how that goes. It should be interesting. <clears throat> Let's see if we get something a little bit more dynamic. Three, four, five, boom. All right, back there. Oh, he's still first. Now it's time for our yellow, buddy. Go yellow, boom. There we go, see? And he went first now. <laughs> awesome. And now green. Now green is third, right? Becomes second. Becomes first. I like it. I like it much better like this. Oh, you saw how it overtook it and skips a turn. That is very nice. Look at blue go. Overtake, overtake, overtake. Oh, skip a turn. My word. Yellow. Overtake, overtake, overtake. Skip a turn. <laughs> Okay, I've taken a screenshot as well of this. Well, I think that's enough for tonight. Thanks very much for watching. Sorry it took us this long. Sometimes I'm not that lucid when I do these things. Uh, but hopefully we'll improve over time. And hopefully you get something useful out of this. Thanks very much. And we'll talk to you next time where we'll actually make laps count, be valued more when we're first, second or third. 
which should be interesting. Okay, see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>